Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. You've left lots of great suggestions and questions in the comments, and today I'd like to address three of those. The first one is about grounding. Why, with this metal rack, do we still need to have grounding connections for each of the panels? The second one is zip ties. Some of you have commented that these zip ties aren't UV stable and they won't last, so we'll go over that. And the third one is coiling the wires. Is that good or bad? So we'll cover those three things real quick and I'll tell you uh, the pros and cons of each one of these, why I did it the way I did and why I'm gonna change some of the things we're gonna change. So let's dig into it. Let's talk about grounding. I've had several questions about grounding this system. The fact that it's bolted right to this metal racking system which is buried in the ground, why do we need grounding? Now the reason you need grounding fundamentally is for protecting the equipment in the case of a lightning strike. We wanna make sure that there's a quick path to ground so that the electronics don't get overpowered. And also to protect people, if they were to come up and touch it, if there was an electrical short, it wouldn't use you as the path to ground. Now the reason why we can't just bolt this directly to the racking system and use that as our grounding is these panels are electrically isolated. They have an anodized coating on them that prevents them from getting corroded and it also isolates them electrically. So if you want to get a good grounding connection, you have to cut through that coating. Now these clips do that for us. They have teeth on them. and When you push them on, they cut through the coating and they make a solid electrical connection. In the past, people have used these grounding lugs and that has a washer with teeth on it that will cut through that coating and make sure there's a good solid connection. And then a solid copper wire continues that connection all the way through and it is also bonded to the racking system itself and it continues all the way to the house and connects with the house's uh, grounding system. That way everything is completely connected and the system is totally grounded even though the panels themselves have the isolation coating. Now I have this meter set to conductivity mode and when there's a direct short, we get a beep sound. So what I can do is touch that probe to the panel in two places and you can see it makes no sound because there's actually no electric connection there. Even though it looks like metal, it's coated. If we touch the grounding strip on each side, we get the green light there. We can see that we have a good connection. Now, if I touch the racking system to the panel, there's no connection. But if I touch it to the grounding strip, we have a nice clean connection. No connection, good connection. So if we were to just bolt these panels to the racking system, we wouldn't have a connection. That's why we have to add the grounding strips. Another great suggestion that, another great suggestion that we had in the comments was related to zip ties. Now I use these zip ties in order to uh, do my wire management, which is really handy. However, some people commented that these zip ties aren't UV stable. And in fact, I was out here the other day and the zip tie around this post actually snapped off. And I guess, you know, this one gets a little more sunlight um, and they still feel pretty strong in most cases. Clearly they aren't gonna last 30 years. Now they make a UV stable version and I'll put a link in the description below to a UV stable zip tie and I'll probably come through and cut these and replace them all with UV stable zip ties. You can also use metal clips. In fact, some were provided with my system. Uh, they slide onto the panels and other metal channels and they're a stainless steel clip and they'll hold the wires and you won't have any problem with those but they're just not as flexible, you know, if you want to package things nicely. So this is one of those stainless steel wire management clips. It just attaches right to the panel and the wires can slip in it. Those, you can be sure, won't be a problem. So if, if you want to be sure that you don't have an issue and you don't want to mess with it, you can always use those clips. Um, I'll put a link in the description to some of those as well. I'll try the UV stable ones and we'll see if those uh, perform better. Now, one other thing that people commented on was these loops in the wire and people were concerned that that was going to be bad for the system and i did a lot of research on that is that really a problem or not finally i just asked my son jordan who is studying to be an electrical engineer to do the calculations for me and tell me if this is a problem or not so let's just turn it over to him and he can explain it so the main concern with loops of wires creating what's called an inductor see this coil of wire will create magnetic fields when a current flows through it. In a DC system, that energy is spent once when you first turn on the power to build up the magnetic field. But in AC, 
magnetic field is built up, and then as the current reverses direction, the magnetic field is broken down and then rebuilt in the opposite direction. The switching back and forth creates what's called impedance, which is essentially the same as resistance in a DC system. Now using some equations over here, we can actually calculate what the impedance will be and its equivalent resistance for a DC system. At 60 Hz, so if you had this coil after you had converted your DC into AC, you can see down here that it would add an effective 0 0.04 inches to the length of the wire, which is 0.17% longer than if you had the wire laid out straight. Now, if we change this frequency to 0 Hz, as is in a DC system, we can see that it adds an extra 0 inches, which is a 0% increase from laying it out straight. So in a DC system, as opposed to an AC system, putting it in a coil creates no extra inductance and therefore does not add any extra impedance or resistance to the line. If for some reason you actually want to play around with these equations, you can find the link to this Desmos sheet in the description below. Thank you, Jordan, for that explanation. Now we can understand clearly that these wires are running DC voltage and this coil does absolutely nothing as far as impacting our performance. And even if we had our uh, AC inverter here instead of these uh, DC-DC converters, which I'm using, meaning everything is DC on this all the way out to the house. But if we had AC, uh, DC-AC inverters here and we put the coil after the AC inverter, as Jordan explained, you would get some impedance from that. However, it's such a small amount that it's pretty much negligible. You, you really wouldn't need to worry about it. So I like my uh, coils. They keep everything nice and neat. I'm gonna keep those. In a future video, we're gonna look at this combiner box. Some comments have been left about using wire nuts and is that really an acceptable method or not? And also you can see I have a crack in the box. How did that get there and what should we do differently to solve that problem? So we'll take a look at that in a future video. I'll see you then. If you have any other questions or ideas, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And why do I have this crack? In a future video, <laughs> Maybe you're wondering why I have a crack. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> start all over. <laughs> okay. <laughs>